Hi, I'm Dr. Thwaseem and welcome to my derm classes. Today's lecture is on trichoscopy. So first I'll be dealing with the introduction, then we'll move on to the basics of trichoscopy examination, further on to the clinical scenarios with specific trichoscopy findings. Coming to the introduction, what is trichoscopy? It is nothing but the use of dermoscope in order to evaluate the hair shaft as well as the scalp. It has a huge impact not only in diagnosing a clinical scenario, but also in order to prognosticate it. So, first, what are the areas that you need to observe while doing a trichoscopic examination? One is hair shaft and then hair follicle, interfollicular epidermis as well as vessels. So, you need to know first of all what are things that you will see in a normal scalp in order to identify what are the pathological findings that you will observe. So, in a normal scalp, you need to identify terminal hair, vellus hair and regrowing hair. Terminal hair can be spotted by the uniform thickness as well as the pigmentation. Whereas vellus hairs will be of shorter in length and of lesser in diameter as well as lightly pigmented. The proportion of vellus hair is important because it's normally 10% while in a pathological condition it can be greater than 10%. Next, the regrowing hair. These are pigmented hairs but with pointed ends. Coming to the other basic structures that you need to identify, one is a black dot. So black dots are also called as cadaverized hairs. These are the hairs that are broken off at the level of scalp. Now what are yellow dots? These are actually dilated follicles that are filled with keratin or sebum. So this usually is seen in an empty hair follicle which gets filled with keratin or sebum. The next structure is a white dots. The white dots can be fibrotic or pinpoint. The fibrotic white dots, they are irregular, seen in cicatricial alopecia. Whereas the pinpoint white dots, they are very regular. So this is seen in two scenarios. One, either they can be the opening of the eccrine glands or can be empty hair follicles. So these are generally seen in non-cicatricial alopecia or in early stages of cicatricial alopecia. So these are the dermoscopic images of yellow dot as well as a black dot. Another important factor that you should know is the hair diameter diversity. So in a, in a normal scalp, there will be diameter of the hair variation which will be less than 20%. But then in a pathological condition, this goes to more than 20%. So while observing, if you see intact hair orifices, it indicates a non-cicatricial alopecia. But not always. As I have mentioned earlier, it can also be seen in the early stages of cicatricial alopecia. Once that is identified, you can further look for yellow dots, black dots or broken hairs. Now the other things that you need to check for are the peri and the interfollicular area for the color, discharge or the surface structures. The next structure is the blood vessels and the different blood vessels indicate different pathological condition. For example, elongated vessels are seen in lichen planoparalis, thick arborizing vessels are seen in discoid lupus erythematosus, glomerular or coil vessels are seen in psoriasis. So that finishes some of the basic structures. Now we'll move on to the clinical scenarios and the specific trichoscopic images. So let's check on the basics that you have learned and apply it to diagnose. So the first scenario, 10 year old boy is brought to you with patchy hair loss in the temples. Mother gives a similar history two years ago with spontaneous regrowth of hair. Now with this clinical scenario, you will have arrived at a diagnosis. So let's move on to the trichoscopic image to confirm. So here you can see that there are yellow dots as well as black dots. So this is a typical trichoscopic image of alopecia areata. So the, image, the features that you will see are black dots, yellow dots and another important feature is that you can even identify whether it is an acute alopecia areata or it is a late or whether it is a late inactive stage. So exclamation mark hairs and black dots are seen in acute alopecia areata. So coming to what is an exclamation mark hair? These are the hairs with narrowed proximal end and a broader distal end. I'll show you the image in a moment. And when these are more, it indicates acute alopecia areata. But when there are more of yellow dots and vellus hairs, it indicates a late inactive stage. So as you can see in this image, there are more yellow dots and uh, the black dots are less. So this is again an image that is showing monolithrix like hairs and Paul Pincus constructions which are features of alopecia areata. So monolithrix like hairs indicate regular narrowing of the hair shaft. Coming to how trichoscope helps in 
evaluating a treatment response in alopecia areata. In this trichoscopic image, you can see coiled hairs. These are called as pigtoy, pigtail hairs and also you can see pointed hairs. So this indicate regrowing hairs in alopecia areata. Coming to the next clinical scenario, 35 year old Caucasian women comes to you with complaints of several patches of hair loss with pruritus. So this is a clinical image. Let's move on to the trichoscopic image. Hope here you can see there are perifollicular scaling and these are uh, cast around the hair follicle and then you can see the white dots which are pinpoint as well as fibrotic and also here you can see the milky red areas. So this is a classical picture of lichen planopilaris. So the structures that you will see are peripylar scale or cast. Now the peripylar scale or cast indicates the hyperkeratosis of the root sheets. And then you can see the white dots which indicates fibrosis as discussed earlier and in advanced cases as you can see here there will be absence of the hair follicle so this is again indicating a cicatricial alopecia and these milky red areas are actually indicating early phase of fibrosis and other features that you can see are elongated linear blood vessels which are not there in the trichoscopic image and also you can see violaceous inter and perifollicular areas as you can see here Coming to the next scenario, a 9 year old girl is bought by her mom with complaints of diffuse hair loss bilaterally on the sides of scalp. So moving on to the trichoscopic image, you can see again see the perifollicular scaling. So hopefully you might have diagnosed from the clinical image itself, it can be traction alopecia. So the features that you can see, one is hair cast and you can also see features of folliculitis and in advanced cases there can be features of miniaturization. So miniaturization is a classical feature of androgenetic alopecia. So this can be seen in advanced cases of traction alopecia as well as there can be white dots. Coming to the next scenario, 4 year old boy is brought to you with complaints of itching and patchy hair loss. So let's move on to the trichoscopic image. So here you can see that there are uh, comma shaped hairs, there are uh, broken hairs, some in the zigzag, zigzag shape and also you can see the barcode like hairs. So these are specific features for tinea capitis. Moving on to the next clinical scenario, 40 year old male comes to your clinic with hair loss since 2 years and also complains of thinning of hair in the crown area. So this is a clinical image, let's move on to the trichoscopy. Here you can see that the, there is a variation in the hair diameter. So as discussed earlier, when it's more than 20 percentage, it indicates a pathological condition. Another thing you can observe is there are a lot of vellus hairs here. And also you can see the number of hair per follicle is very less, like one. So the features of hair diameter diversity more than 20 percentage, yellow dots, increased vellus hairs, single hair follicular unit indicates androgenetic alopecia. And even brown hairs can be seen. So the brown halos are also called as peripylar sign and they indicate the lymphocytic infiltration around the hair follicles. And one of the best way to diagnose androgenic alopecia is always to compare the frontal, uh, frontal area or the vertex area with the occipital area. Why? Because as we know the occipital area will be spared in androgenic alopecia. So coming to the next clinical scenario, a 30 year old female comes to you with hair loss for the past 3 months. She also gives a history of dieting and weight loss of 10 kg. So let's see the uh, trichoscopic image. Here you can see that the number of hair per follicle is less, but there is no much variation in the hair diameter diversity. So this stands for telogen effluve. So the features of equal diameter hair shafts and there can be empty hair follicles, but this is a non-specific finding. And also peripylar sign can also be seen in telogen effluvium. And if it's in the regrowing phase, you can see a lot of growing, regrowing hairs. Coming to the next clinical scenario, a 10 year old girl is brought to you with complaints of patchy hair loss. And this is the clinical image. So let's see the trichoscopic features. Here you can see that there are black dots, there are broken hairs which are of varying length and also there are V hairs. So this is a typical feature of trichotillomania. So there can be broken shafts of different lengths, there can be split ends, it's also known as trichoptilosis. You can also observe tulip hairs. So what are tulip hairs? This is nothing but hairs with increased pigmentation at the distal end. I'll be showing you the image in a moment. There can also be coil hairs and flame hairs. So this is a more specific for trichotillomania. So these generally stands for the proximal part of the hairs which are broken. So they appear as coiled or it can appear as flame. 
and the V hairs generally indicates the two hairs that are pulled off from a single hair follicle. So they form a V. So these are some images of tulip hairs. Here you can see this is flame hair and also the V hairs. Next case scenario, imagine a patient is coming to you with hair loss in tufts with scales and plaques. And on trichoscopic examination, you can see erythema with multiple red dots and globules. So this is a feature of scab psoriasis. Coming to the next scenario, 60 year old female is coming to you with hair loss. She also complains of recession of her handelier hairline. So this is a clinical image. So you might have come at a diagnosis. Let's go on to the trichoscopic image. Here you can see that there is perifollicular scaling, which is very uh, classical in almost all the follicles. So the features of perifollicular scaling lack of follicular openings, which can be seen some empty space as empty spaces. Then there can be lonely hairs. So these are the hairs that are surrounded by areas of fibrosis, as well as absence of vellus hairs in the frontal area. So this is a specific feature for frontal fibrosing alopecia. Coming to the next scenario, 40 year old female is coming to you with complaints of patchy hair loss associated with pruritus. So this is the clinical image. On examination, you can see that there is erythema, epidermal atrophy, dilated uh, hair follicles that's plugged in with the keratin. So again, this is a very classical uh, clinical picture. Let's move on to the trichoscopic image. So here you can see that there are yellow dots, uh, which are dilated follicles that's filled with keratin. And also you can see that there are dilated blood vessels. And this is typical feature for discoid lupus erythematosus. The so features of large yellow dots with superimposed blood vessels. So this is known as red spider in yellow dot appearance. So this is seen in discoid lupus erythematosus. Coming to the next scenario, 28 year old male is coming to you with complaints of hair loss as well as multiple bumpy lesions with malodorous discharge. So this is a clinical image. Let's move on to the trichoscopy. Here you can see that there are uh, yellow dots and you can see there is white fibrotic areas and also you can see there is perifollicular scaling as well as a background erythema. So this is classical features for dissecting cellulitis of scalp. So yellow structureless areas as well as dystrophic hair shafts and also white areas that's lacking follicular openings. As you know, this is a type of cicatricial alopecia. In early phases, it can even show features of alopecia areata. So coming to the next scenario, 20 year old male is coming to you with multiple pus filth lesions on scalp with hair loss. So this is the clinical image. Let's move on to the trichoscopic image. Here you can see that there is tufts of hair from a single follicle. You can see that there is perifollicular scaling and also there is yellow scaling with background erythema as well as white structureless areas or the fibrotic areas. So the, this is a feature of folliculitis decalvans. So perifollicular scaling, hair tufts that contain 5 to more than 20 hairs, yellow tubular scales as you can see here, perifollicular epidermal hyperplasia as well as pustules and discharge. So this, this will be seen more in acute scenario. So coming to anagen effluvium. So we have short anagen effluvium, loose anagen effluvium as well as chemotherapy induced anagen effluvium. So there are, there are trichoscopic features that are specific for each. In short anagen effluvium, there will be normal hair density. The thing that you can notice is there will be short regrowing hairs of different lengths. But in loose anagen effluvium, there will be sparse hair, but there will also be decreased number of hair shafts per follicular unit. Occasionally, you can see trichorexis nodosa. Coming to chemotherapy induced anagen effluvium, here you can see more black dots, monolithic like hairs, as well as exclamation mark hairs. So these are actually the various uh, hair shaft disorders, which I am not covering in this trichoscopy lecture. So that pretty much wraps up the lecture on trichoscopy. Let me know if you need any further explanation of any of the topics that's been discussed. And these are my references. Thank you.